Hey guys, Max here. In this video, I'm gonna go over six things you can't forget. If you wanna charge the most money in your house, rent-wise, you must do these six things. And if you're considering renting out a room in your house, whether it be your spare bedroom, your office, whatever it may be, you must do these things. You cannot forget them. So the six things you must do starting right now. The question is, is your house an asset or a liability? What do you think? What a 20% of all the dollars ever printed were printed since 2019. Experience. Reading books is great, but learning from your experience is how you do it. All right, number one is outside, keeping the lawn immaculate. And when I say immaculate, yes, it means you hire someone. They're really not that expensive. If you have any, any amount of front yard or backyard, you want to make sure you hire someone because they can do it more quickly faster and in reality if you do your hourly hourly rate how much you're paid you will spend less money on so keep the mind the, the lawn immaculate it shows pride of ownership and it shows that your potential tenant says hmm this person actually takes care of the house so down the road if there's a problem they can call you or they can talk to you and the problem will be will be rectified quickly if you see houses where the the lawn is about one foot or two two foot high with weeds you can rest assured that your landlord is not going to take care of you. So you want to make sure the lawn looks immaculate to get that person who knows you're going to be for them, be there for them. All right, number two is new paint. Now, I don't do this every single time, so obviously each situation is different. But if the room needs new paint, if there are a bunch of holes, if there are gouges, if drywall needs to be repaired, repair the drywall, repaint it, a fresh coat of paint. <laughs> it's amazing what a fresh coat of paint. When, you're, when someone's selling a house, the first thing they do is repaint the whole thing. Why? Because when new owners come in, they look and see, wow, it looks. It, it gives the appearance that it's a lot nicer than it really is. Not to say you want to deceive, but you want to, it's kind of like when you go on a first date, you want to put your best foot forward. Similarly, putting new paint on is your best foot forward. So if you think it, if, if in doubt you think it needs it, do it. All right, number three is hire a housekeeper. A clean house means everyone's mind is clear. Everything is very, very peaceful. The last thing you want is a chaotic house. There's stuff here, stuff there, stuff everywhere. Everything's clean, everything's dirty. It's been dirty for months. You wanna make sure things are clear, so spaces are clear, as well as things are nice and sparkly clean. If you show someone the house for the first time and they're coming in, they see the lawn's immaculate, they see new paint, and they see that obviously the house is cleaned on a weekly or every two week basis, they are far more likely going to pay you rent and pay you more rent. All right, number four is having a washer and dryer in the house. I bet you I charge at least 20 or 30 bucks a month per per person simply because of having this convenience. Having to go to the laundromat is a drag. If you have a washer and dryer in your in either the garage or the living space, it's, you, you'll be able, definitely be able to charge more for rent than someone who has to go send the people to the laundromat. All right, number five is having a quiet culture. Now that doesn't mean you're silent 24 seven, but it means that during the day, even if everyone's home, it's quiet. There's not loud music. There's not someone loud on a phone call with their buddy having a good old time. That's fine. You can do all those things, but there are these things called headphones and there are, is this thing called going outside to take a phone call. Yes, even if you live in your own house, taking a phone call outside just shows that really, it shows that upper level of, upper level of respect that you wanna give to people. If you have a quiet culture and things are quiet 24 seven, that kind of person that you want who wants a peaceful house, cause guess what? I want a peaceful house, so do they. So let's work together. If you want a chaotic house, you definitely would not work out in my house. But if you want something peaceful and orderly, having a culture of quietness is in your best interest. All right, then lastly is furnish the room. I'm gonna go over a case study on a furnished room compared to an unfurnished room and show you what the big difference is. All right, so here is the bedroom, obviously. Here's an unfurnished bedroom. Your cost to keep it unfurnished is obviously, there is no cost, it's zero. So you get ahead of the beginning, but let me show you why I encourage you to furnish every single room that you ever rent out. All right, so here's the furnished room. So you need a few things. You need obviously a, they call it corner table, but I call that a desk. A desk costs 75 bucks. You're gonna need a bed frame. What's nice about these bed frames and a lot of them online is they can adjust. So if someone has a twin mattress, full, clean, a lot of times these mattresses can't adjust. So that's pretty cool. Again, about 70 bucks and get, and then the box spring. These three things are great because guess what? The desk you can reuse for different people over and over again, unless they destroy it, then you have to replace it. The box spring, same thing, reused over and over. 
and then the bed frame as well. All three of these things can be used with multiple tenants. Don't buy a mattress. People don't like sleeping on used mattresses. Even if you bought it brand new and you tell them that, they're still going to assume that it's someone else's mattress. It's a weird thing that most people do not want. So when we add all those three things up, it comes in to about two, 250 bucks when it's all said and done, including tax. So you have an initial investment of 250 But let me show you why that 250 is a great investment. Here we go. Unfurnished, my monthly rent. I, this actually is a, a real life study that I actually did on uh, in, in my house. So monthly rent, unfurnished room is 575 So they're going to bring their mattress, their box spring, the desk, all that junk. Let me tell you also why I like to furnish the room. Because when people start bringing in beds, furniture, dressers, sock drawers, all things like that, your house, the corners of your house begin to start looking like someone lives there. <laughs> As in, you'll find the gouges in the side when you're not there, people moving furniture. It's very difficult to move furniture without smashing into the wall. Unless you're someone's doing it professionally, they're probably going to hit the wall at least once, which means you probably have to repaint, redrywall, headache. So if you can avoid that at all costs, the furnished room is definitely the way to go. All right, so the unfurnished room, 575 You have zero out-of-pocket expense. So it seems like a good investment in the beginning, right? Not so much. A furnished room, I rent, I rent it for 650 compared to 575 You pay 250 out of out-of-pocket expense. You do that one time. Now think about it like this. 575 minus 650. Doesn't seem like a lot of difference, but when you do it over a year, that's 75 bucks per month or 900 bucks per year. You take away 900 and you and you subtract the 250, you're still looking at 650 a year in profit in your pocket simply for furnishing the house. Furnish, furnishing the room, excuse me. It pays for itself in 4 months and that's pure profit. And like I said, these are things, the desk, the box frame, and the bed frame that can be re reused over and over again. Even if you have to re, if you know, if you, even if someone, when someone moves out, all those things, three things are destroyed, you pay 250 each time and you're still 650 ahead, even if you have to replace those three things every single year. I replaced mine probably once every three or four years. So it's definitely in your best interest to have a furnished room. Yeah, there you go. Even if the buying them is once per year, you're still way ahead. So you definitely want to furnish the room because if you furnish the room, 900 bucks a month, $900 per year, extra in your pocket just for furnishing the room. Imagine if you do that, not for one, but for your second room as well. Hmm, that's a pretty big difference there. Those are the six. The most important one is definitely furnishing the room. Furnishing the room will put way more profit in your pocket and super important. What do you guys think? What other things should you do to charge more in your house? I want you guys to comment below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now now.